destroy Wrestle Talk. Thanks for your support on Patreon. Angry Arbel Zaffari. Did we just see the last of Dean Ambrose in WWE? Gimme, gimme, gimme a match for Batista. And oh yeah, the Intercontinental title changed hands again. Also, have John Cena's WrestleMania plans been leaked? Click the timestamps in the video description below to go to any of those stories. I'm Ollie Davis. Give us a subscribe, press the thumbs up button, and answer our question of the day in the comments. Do you think Dean Ambrose is now finished with WWE? Because I'll be replying to people from out of nowhere. And click the I above my head to give your rating of the show, where you can choose from Rawsome, Core, Average, Forge, poor, and rawful, as I review the 11th of March 2019 edition of Monday Night Raw. 47 sleeps until WrestleMania. Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, and Seth Rollins open the show with new merch! And by giving a farewell address, setting up the next chapters in their singles careers. Roman wants his first one on one match on Raw in five months. Seth will go on to face Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania, and Dean will. Awkward. Ambrose and Reigns left, leaving Seth to have a promo battle with Brock Lesnar proxy Paul Heyman, and the two retconned some much-needed substance into their feud. Rollins pointed out how Lesnar had struggled against Daniel Bryan, AJ Styles and Finn Balor in recent years, implying Brock has trouble with quicker, more athletic opponents like Seth. Heyman countered that it was only because each of those wrestlers were late match changes. It was a fascinating angle to take in their story, and it distracted Seth enough to be surprise attacked with a series of of German suplexes from Lesnar. Because brand split, LOL, SmackDown Live drafted wrestler Shelton Benjamin, who hasn't been properly featured on TV for almost a year, suddenly started a singles match with Rollins on Raw, which Seth won. Lesnar will apparently be on next week's episode. I've got a new favourite thing in wrestling, everyone. Bobby Lashley pretending to be Zordon from the Power Rangers. It's much better than his previous direct look to camera. I just want to say how much I love my three beautiful sisters. As if it wasn't all weird enough, Lashley would then go on to beat Bala thanks to Leo Rush ringing the bell in distraction, becoming the new Intercontinental Champion just three weeks after he'd lost it to Bala at Elimination Chamber. This was one of the more forgettable title changes in recent times. But don't be too angry at the booking, because none of this is real, it's all scripted. Which one the Rousey was out to explain next by calling Becky Lynch and Charlotte carny con woman that she'll expose at WrestleMania. Because, you see, everyone else is playing at combat sports, but Ronda's the real deal. Very problematic promo content aside, this was amongst the best portrayals of Ronda since she's joined the company, where she completely annihilated Dana Brooke afterwards. What is it, bring your undercard to work day? But didn't lock in the armbar, yelling at the crowd, pay 60 bucks and I'll give you an armbar. When did the network get so expensive? In this week's instalment of the NXT call-up support group, Alistair Black and Ricochet took on Chad Gable and Bobby Roode. Ricochet's high spots are impressive, the Black Mass was protected, and Ricochet and Alistair won yet again. There's nothing wrong with this, but it's nowhere near the most effective way to book them. The Revival jumped Black and Ricochet from behind afterwards to continue the tag team feud. Why won't your segment die? Alexa Bliss revealed next that the host of WrestleMania 35 will be... Alexa Bliss! I'm not entirely sure why WrestleMania's need hosts, let alone special correspondents, and Bliss once again being in a non-wrestling role implies she is injured and not medically cleared. Speaking of guest hosts at WrestleMania... It appears WWE are indeed building a WrestleMania match between Braun Strowman and SNL's Mike and Colin. As Strowman destroyed a car, the two comedians had sent him as a gift. But that would make it two on one at WrestleMania. Who could possibly come to Strowman's aid? Help us, Nicholas. You're our only hope. Elias beat up No Way Jose for being No Way Jose. Harlem Heat are going into the WWE Hall of Fame this year, meaning Booker T will be a two-time, two-time Hall of Famer. Lacey Evans made her entrance for no reason, and then Nia Jax took on Natalia after their brawl at Fastlane. Beth Phoenix was out there too, and there was a DQ, and Sasha Banks and Bailey jumped Jackson to Mina backstage afterwards, and nobody cared. And now I will perform the dialogue exchange between Triple H and Batista's face-to-face. -face. <coughs> ha! Huh? Give me what I want! No. Give me what I want! No. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me what I want! 
okay then. In all seriousness though, this was an incredible segment and my favourite thing on the entire show. Sure, Batista was almost childish in the way he demanded a WrestleMania match from Triple H, but that's the intent and a testament to the man's acting. This new Batista is obsessed with being in control of the man he feels has stood over him all his life. It's a classic Oedipal narrative. The student resenting the teacher, the son wanting to kill the father. Don't let the crazy line delivery distract you from this being a fascinating feud dynamic and one which will now culminate in a no-holds-barred match at WrestleMania. The Mania card continued to take shape next when Kurt Angle announced that is where he'll be having his last ever match. But for now, in his hometown of Pittsburgh, he'll beat Apollo Crews in minutes. Which was fine, but if you're going to randomly use Shelton Benjamin on this episode, doesn't it make a lot more sense to do it with his former team angle leader Kurt. It looks like we'll have to wait another week at least for Roman's return to the ring on Raw as Drew McIntyre brutalised him before his match against Baron Corbin could get started. Why are you a team? Drew and his Claymore were booked to look incredible here, concussing Roman with one against the ring post. Rollins ran down to help his beaten brother while Ambrose demanded a Fool's Count Anywhere match with McIntyre from Triple H, which Triple H granted because there are definitely no authority figures anymore. It provides provided an awesome TV main event, with McIntyre and Ambrose brawling around the entire arena. Having Dean's real-life wife, Renee, on commentary helped heighten the drama, with her reactions to Drew stabbing a pencil in Ambrose's eye being the best announcing she's done so far. The finish appeared to finally write Dean off WWE TV for him to leave the company entirely, putting over McIntyre strong as he delivered a claymore to Ambrose trapped in a stair rail. Thank you, Dean. You'll be missed. With Fastlane now out the way, we finally feel to be on the road to WrestleMania with the card taking shape. And the Batista Triple H angle and the main event match were fantastic. This week's Raw is core. Now it's over to Luke with John Cena's WrestleMania plans potentially being leaked. Thanks, Ollie. Great review as always, which just makes sense. Despite people telling me on Twitter that El Fakador is out to destroy WrestleTalk, I still think he's a totally trustworthy figure who 100% supports WrestleTalk. And someone else who supports WrestleTalk is Nick Jackson of the Young Bucks, revealing in the latest episode of Being the Elite that he's a reader of the WrestleTalk magazine. And this follows on from Matt Riddle reading the magazine in his Arrival series on the WWE Network. What I'm trying to say is that cool kids are reading this magazine so you should probably go get yourself a copy too. Hmm. Maybe peer pressure isn't the best way to sell merchandise. Uh, oh, um, if you don't buy a copy, I'll, um, I'll do a streak. And trust me, that is something you don't want to see. Speaking of streaks, and the world of wrestling has seen some classic ones over the last few years, with Asuka remaining undefeated for nearly a thousand days in NXT and on the main roster, and even Kurt Hawkins' impressive losing streak which has been going on since 2016. It sort of makes you long for Rusev's winning streak, you know the one where the Bulgarian brute went undefeated as United States Champion and even rode a tank into WrestleMania for his match against John Cena. Well now Rusev has a brand new streak. Only this one isn't quite as good as his last one. On the kickoff show for WWE Fastlane Baby, Rusev teamed with Shinsuke Nakamura in a losing effort to New Day. And according to ESPN's Andrew Feldman on Twitter, that was Rusev's 17th straight pay-per-view loss. And while that number might seem bad, it's about to get worse, as that number is actually tied with the great Khali for the longest running pay-per-view losing streak in WWE history. Rusev's last pay-per-view win was at Roadblock, end of line, in December 2016, where he beat Big Cass on the pre-show. Since then, he's been beaten by the likes of Big Show, John Cena, Randy Orton, AJ Styles, and even his current teammate Shinsuke Nakamura. When this possible history-making record was revealed, to Rusev, he responded on Twitter saying, Knowing how things are, they probably won't even let me be number one. Speaking of Rusev's WrestleMania 31 opponent, and it's been widely reported that WWE still haven't made a definitive decision on John Cena's match for Mania 35 in just a few weeks. Originally, it was reported that Cena was set to face Lars Sullivan, who was going to attack him prior to the Royal Rumble to write him off that show. Because remember, WWE announced John Cena for a show he was never going to be a part of. Sadly, Lars suffered what was 
was believed to be an anxiety attack backstage, and then he reportedly no-showed a couple of Raw tapings and house show events. With that storyline being dropped, it was then rumored Cena would face Drew McIntyre, who would essentially replace Lars in the storyline, but those plans were also dropped. Many figured he would then face R-Truth for the US Championship, seeing as though Truth was defending the belt in his honor. But then Truth lost that title to Samoa Joe on SmackDown last week. And according to Dave Meltzer on Wrestling Observer Radio, John Cena versus Samoa Joe for the United States Championship was not the WrestleMania plan as of last week. With the new speculation that he will be the man to face Kurt Angle in his farewell match, which was announced on last night's Raw. Mirroring Cena's own WWE debut back in the day. And in a WWE.com backstage interview, Angle revealed that the names being thrown around for his farewell match do include Cena, as well as some of his former TNA stars like Samoa Joe, Drew McIntyre, and Bobby Lashley. Thanks for watching and thanks to all of our pledge have a scrolling into my Oh, dare you be. Screen Stalker is here. Click the video over there to watch our inaugural episode of the Gaming News and click subscribe to join the Fakador army. And all of you pledge hammers scrolling down below me, I'm assimilating you. Ooh, I'm assimilating you right now. Oh, lovely, lovely. <clears throat>